Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibrations and waves. The topic of this video is the mathematics of standing waves, and we want to know what are the formulas that one can use to solve a standing wave problem, and how do you use those formulas? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed standing waves and harmonics. And many of the relationships and formulas used in this video were introduced and developed in that video. And I've left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. This table shows the standing wave patterns for the various harmonics of a string, a rope, or a wire. One thing you'll note in the patterns is that the number of anti-nodes that are vibrating wildly up and down from an between the extremes is equal to the harmonic number. So for the first harmonic, there's one antinode. For the third harmonic, there's three antinodes. For the nth harmonic, there are n antinodes. And the number of nodes is simply the antinodes plus one. You'll notice in these two columns that the wavelength and frequency relationships between the harmonics is identified. The wavelength of the nth harmonic is simply the wavelength of the first harmonic divided by n. So for the third harmonic, you take the wavelength of the first and divide by three. And you'll note also that the frequency of the nth harmonic is equal equal to the frequency of the first harmonic multiplied by n. In these two columns, we see examples of how that those relationships are used in order to find the wavelength and the frequency of the various harmonics for when the first harmonic wavelength is 1.20 and the first harmonic frequency is 50 hertz. So the formulas that you'll need to use are, first of all, the formulas relating the wavelengths to one another. The wavelength of the nth harmonic is equal to the wavelength of the first divided by n. And the frequency of the nth harmonic is equal to the frequency of the first harmonic multiplied by n. And you'll need to know that the speed is equal to the frequency times wavelength for any standing wave. And finally, you'll need to know how to calculate the wavelength from the length of the rope, string, or wire. You simply take 2 and divide by the harmonic number and multiply by the length of the rope, or string, or wire. I'm going to recommend the use of a problem-solving strategy that centers around this graphic that you see here. In the graphic, the quantities that you have to solve for, like frequency, wavelength, and speed, are in a box. And the symbol for that quantity is in parentheses right behind the name of the quantity. In black, you'll see a formula or some sort of a tip to how to, how to relate these quantities to one another. Like here, the speed is related to the frequency and the wavelength by the formula V equal F times lambda. When it comes to frequency, there's several harmonics and thus several different frequencies, so you'll have to be consistent in using the formula. If you know the frequency of the third harmonic, you'll have to say V equal the frequency of the third harmonic times the wavelength of the third harmonic. The formula becomes V equal F3 times wavelength 3. Now sometimes you know the frequency of the third harmonic and you want to find the frequency of other harmonics, maybe the first or the sixth harmonic. So to do that, you would need to use the formula that the frequency of the nth harmonic is n times the frequency the first harmonic. Sometimes you're not given the frequency. Instead, you're given the number of up and down, complete up and down cycles of vibration of the standing wave per unit of time. And so you would use the relationship that F equal the number of cycles per time in order to get frequency from that information. Oftentimes in a problem, you have to solve for the length of the rope or the string or the wire. In doing so, you can relate that information to the wavelength and the standing wave pattern. If you know what the pattern looks like, you can inspect it and figure out how many wave wavelengths are inside the length of the rope, and then solve for the wavelength or the length from the other quantity. Now this problem solving strategy, or this graphic organizer, can be found on our website on the lesson notes page. There's a link to that page in the description section of this video. I'll be solving six example problems in this video, and each time we're going to look at that problem-solving graphic in order to determine how to work our way from the givens to the unknown. In the first problem, a string has a fundamental frequency of 128 hertz, and I want to know the frequency of the next three harmonics, the second, the third, and the fourth harmonic. In an example two, I have a pattern given and I'm told that the string vibrates at 360 hertz when it vibrates in this pattern, and I want to know the frequency of the first harmonic. So in both of these problems, it's all about frequency. I'm given the frequency of one of the harmonics, and I want to find the frequency of the other harmonics. So I'm right here on the problem-solving graphic. So I want to use the formula F 
n equal n times f1. In the first problem, I know f1 is 125 hertz. I want to find f2, f3, and f4. And so I'm using fn equal n times f1. I take the 125 hertz and I multiply by 2, by 3, and by 4 in order to get the f2, f3, and f4 values shown here. In the second problem, I'm given this standing wave pattern. I recognize it as the third harmonic. And I'm told the frequency of the third harmonic is 360 hertz. I want to find the frequency of the first harmonic. Once more, I use the formula fn equal n times f1. That would be f3 equal 3 times f1. I want to solve for f1 though, so I divide both sides by 3. I take my 360 hertz and I divide it by 3 and I get 120 hertz as the frequency of the first harmonic. Here's example 3. I have the fourth harmonic wave pattern and a frequency of 488 hertz. The wave speed is 366 meters per second. So I know f4 and I know v. I'm asked to determine the length of the rope or string. I'm looking for L. So here's my problem solving graphic. And what I know is the V and the frequency of the fourth harmonic. So I can use V equal F times lambda to find the wavelength of the fourth harmonic. That will be my first step. Once I get the wavelength of the fourth harmonic, I'll use the standing wave pattern to determine the length of the rope or string. So here we go. I begin with that F4 value and the V value to calculate the wavelength of the fourth harmonic. I go the wavelength 4 equal V divided by F4, and I get 0.75 meters. Got my first step done. Now i got to find the length of the rope. I do that by using the standing wave pattern for the fourth harmonic. When I look at this standing wave pattern, I can count the number of, of waves within it. Uh, I sometimes do that by counting the number of looping sections, and there's actually four of them. And then I say that the length is equal to 4 divided by 2 times the wavelength of the fourth harmonic. I get that formula because each one of those looping sections, there's four of them, and each one is a half of a wavelength. So it's 4 divided by 2 times the wavelength of the fourth harmonic. Plug in 0.75 meters to this equation and you get 1.50 meters for the length of the rope. Here's example four. I have a string and its length equal 1.05 meters and waves travel through it with a V equal 198 meters per second. I want to know F1, F2, and F3. Here's my problem solving strategy. I know the speed and I know the length and I'm looking for the frequency of harmonic one, two, and three. The only way to get a frequency is to know a wavelength, but I don't know it. So my first step is to take the length and to get the wavelength from it using the standing wave diagram. I'm going to pick the first harmonic, so I'll find the wavelength of harmonic one, lambda one. Now I can use V equal F1 times lambda one to find F1. Once I get the frequency of the first harmonic, I can find the frequencies of the other harmonics using Fn equal N times F1. So here it goes. Here's the first harmonic, and I notice there's one loop within that length of the rope, or of the string, and every loop is a half a wavelength. So I can say L equal one half times wavelength one. I can solve for wavelength one with a little algebra, end up going two times 1.05, and I get 2.10 meters. Now that I got wavelength one, I can find frequency one. So I go V equal F1 times lambda one, and then I do some algebra to solve for F1. I get a rounded number of 94.3 hertz for the frequency of the first harmonic. Now to find the frequencies of the second and the third harmonics, I use Fn equal n times F1 with n values of 2 and 3. I'm going to take my unrounded number, 94 point blah blah blah, and multiply it by 2 and by 3 to get these frequencies here for the second and the third harmonic. In example five, I have a 45 centimeter long string, and I know that it's vibrating at its fifth harmonic frequency of 220 hertz. So I know L, and I know F5, and I know that it's the fifth harmonic. I want to calculate the speed at which waves travel within that string. So here's my problem solving strategy. I know the length, and I know the frequency of the fifth harmonic. I want to calculate the speed. To do that, I need to get the wavelength of the fifth harmonic. So my first step is to take the length and to find the wavelength from it. Then I can go V equal F5 times lambda 5. So here's the fifth harmonic wave pattern. And if I count, there are five loops within that fifth harmonic wave pattern. Each loop is a half a wavelength. So within the length of the string, there are five divided by two wavelengths. I can use this relationship to solve for the wavelength of the fifth harmonic. I simply take the length and I divide it by five halves or by 2.5. I end up getting a length of 18.0 and the unit on this is centimeters. Now I can solve for the speed. It didn't specify, so I can solve for the speed in units 
units of centimeters per second or units of meters per second. Either way, I'm going to multiply an F5 value of 220 hertz by a wavelength of the fifth harmonic, 18 centimeters or 0.18 meters. I did it both ways. I calculated the, the speed in centimeters per second going F5 times wavelength 5, and then I moved the decimal place two places to the left to get it in meters per second. In example 6, I have a string that's vibrating in its third harmonic, and the length is 6 meters long. The string is making 45 complete up and down cycles of vibration in 10 seconds. I want to calculate the frequency, the wavelength, the speed, and the period. So here's my problem solving graphic. What I know is the number of cycles and the time. I can use that to calculate the frequency. I also know the length of the string. I can use that to calculate the wavelength. Once I get wavelength and frequency, I can find the period as the reciprocal of the frequency, and I can find the speed as v equal f times lambda. So here it goes. I'm going to begin with that 45 cycles in 10 seconds and use it to calculate the frequency. I get 4.5 hertz. The period is the reciprocal of the frequency. So I take the reciprocal of 4.5 hertz and I get 0.22 repeating as the period in seconds. Now that I got the frequency of the third harmonic, I'm going to find the wavelength of the third harmonic from the length of the string. If I look at the pattern, I notice that there's three looping sections within the length of that string. So I can say L is equal to 3 halves times the wavelength of the third harmonic. Now you can put in 6 meters on the left side and solve for the wavelength of the third harmonic. You'll have to divide by 1.5. There's a lot of ways to do your algebra, but either way you do it, you're going to get a wavelength of the third harmonic of 4.0 meters. Now that I know the wavelength of the third harmonic and the frequency of the third harmonic, I can calculate the speed of, the, of this wave. I go F3 times lambda 3, 4.5 times 4.0, and I get 18 meters per second. Now I've done six example problems and I recognize that depending on your course I may not have covered everything that you're struggling with. For instance, if you're doing sound waves traveling through air, you might have to relate the temperature of air T to the speed of sounds traveling through air using an equation like that. You might also be doing open and closed in air columns and you have to recognize that the standing wave patterns for those air columns are not the same as that for ropes and strings and wires. And if you are doing ropes and strings and wires, it's possible that you might have to relate the tension of the rope or string or wire and the linear density to the speed at which sound waves travel through it using an equation that looks like that, V equal the square root of the tension divided by the linear density or mass per length of the wire, string, or rope. Now, the point to emphasize, though, is that no matter what nuance you're struggling with, practice makes perfect is more than a slogan. And what you probably need is a collection of practice problems that give you immediate feedback as to the correctness of your solution and offer some built-in help for getting through from the givens to the unknowns. And you will find that at our website. And so if you look in the description section of this video, you'll note that I've left several links to places where you can get the practice that you need. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, can you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, any one of which could be great next steps. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a calculator pad with a collection of problems, which may be your best next step. A Minds on physics mission, which is a close second. And finally, here's a tutorial page if you need to brush up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.